this video, I'm going to be breaking down Dez versus Dreamy in the Madden 25 Most Feared Challenge. And this is the semifinal matchup. Now, I actually wanted to clarify something. I recently found out that the, the uh, first half issue with the watch parties was primarily due to the EA stream basically not working as proper. So bottom line with that is that can't happen, right? It just can't happen. So both, you know, everybody needs to be better from that. Hopefully they will be better in the future. I uh, was really frustrated with the overall broadcast of this event. And I feel like we were honestly robbed of four really good games in round one of, of this in the quarterfinals. So anyway, that being said, uh, going to be breaking down a little bit more in detail what both of these guys are doing. We're going to be slowing the game down a little bit and just trying to learn as much as we can. Now, I want to start out real quick with uh, just kind of an over overarching uh, deal here. So Drini is in dollar. He's in dime three, two. And one of the things that he is doing a lot is he is walking these guys down. And basically what that means is he's going to pinch his D line and he's going to have a contain out of a DB fire look, or he can from this look send edge blitz three, or if he really wanted to, he could probably send uh six will be. So, I love this look. It gives you three really good blitzing components. A lot of people really like the backed off corners this year. I'm not sure exactly how I how I feel. I I basically have pretty much shifted to running three through five odd, which Drini actually was running before this event. So uh, anyway, just kind of interesting. Uh, Dez is going to be on the Cardinals, and he is going to be in Packers. Uh, Packers playbook has the most amount of formations that I think are good and the most like the most the most amount of formations that are good that he could audible around. So he's going to audible around pretty much every single play and he's going to start it out with a run. They start the game out with run generally so that they can get on a hash um, it just makes everything in the offense a little bit more systematic. So as you see here, he's coming out in, the, in that double safety go walk down, which brings these guys into the box and then he audibles into whatever defense he wants to run. Now, as you see, again, he's walking these slot corners off the um, off of the line of scrimmage. This prevents them from moving any pre-snap whenever he goes to pinch his D-line. When you pinch your D-line on a dollar, sometimes the slot corner will move over here and vice versa. This prevents that. This also is better for DB fire this year. And then these guys being pinched in. So this is kind of probably the best way to be running dollar. And this is... Dez's main formation that I've seen him in. It's this bunch strong, uh, bunch strong nasty with this cheap motion. Now, the reason this cheap motion is good is two reasons. It's the cheap motion with the auto wheel in Packers playbook. So you have this cheap motion wheel, which is really good because it can beat cover two. It you can't really play man coverage against that route. It's just a really, really good route. And then he's gonna basically freestyle off of that. So here we'll probably get like a streak, a corner, maybe a flat, typically. Uh, but the other reason why this is really good is because it's play action blocking. And play action blocking is going to make this blitz and this blitz a lot more difficult. So it really um, is going to be his main play throughout this tournament. And we'll just kind of take a look here at the combination here. And you see, I mean, we have streak, corner drag and in route and then a cheat motion wheel so this is really not a great combination if this guy's an outside third outside quarter but but in this year's game uh you can kind of throw almost anything you want so you see here dreamy is going to send db fire okay off rip he has that cover two inside quarter inside third uh, this might even just literally be inside quarter, inside quarter, soft squat, soft squat, or cloud, cloud, and then vert hook here. So basically at this point, what can what can Dez really throw? He looks out, oh, that's cover two. He can throw that, but he has to wait on it and throw it back there. And really the route is probably the running back here, uh, but we'll see kind of what he ends up throwing. So as you see, he's actually going to try to throw a seam streak and and – and you see here, uh, this has been a this is a big problem this year. Drop picks are a problem every year. This year, I think it's it's every year it feels like it's it gets worse. This year, it's really bad. Like 
they even said they tried to fix drop picks, and they have not fixed drop picks whatsoever. So you see him again here going to this cheap motion. And this is one of those um, plays. Now, so now you see this is completely freestyled, and this is out of that play action play. So why would he call the play? He's calling it for the play action blocking. This is something Dez was doing a lot in this game, was basically these bench combinations. And I'm not sure exactly why. If it is cover four, I guess because he can cut it off before it gets to this quarter. And if it's cover two soft squat, the soft squat has to go play the flat, and this becomes open to the side. So this is one of his main combinations that you'll see. Drini sends DB fire two here. Now look here on the left side. Here we get a man up. We really get kind of a cross manny defense. And notice what Dez is doing with these corners. These corners beat the man coverage well. He's able to just throw that. Gets an inaccurate. And now he's in a fourth down situation. So, you know, third, second down, Drini kind of got messed up. Uh, third down, Dez kind of got messed up. And now here we sit in a fourth and sixth situation. Kind of see what, what, uh, what they can do here. And fourth down is always, you know, kind of one of those downs where you learn a lot about what play they would have run, what they want to do, what their core strategy really is. So you see here this time, notice what Draney does. This is the first time he's done this. He comes out and he basically just presses and he manually walks these safeties into the box. So now he doesn't have to walk these guys off, right? Now, why would he do this? In my opinion, at first I thought it was something to do with his pressure. I think it's due to his coverage. He doesn't want the backed off corners because it's a fourth and sixth situation. He wants them to play kind of this, this 10 yard window is really, he really wants to limit these throws. So what I would anticipate is probably a DB fire pressure with maybe a the logic of, Next Gen Madden has really been the slow backup, like the drift logic, where they're just going to slowly drift back to where they're supposed to go. So it's just kind of interesting why he might be doing this. I don't know for sure, but I do think it's more of a coverage thing than a pressure thing. And Dez going to audible to tight open. And I think he is, let's see what he's got kind of cooking. He's actually going to call timeout. Now, in the first half, you can kind of get away with calling timeouts really whenever you want to. In the second half, you really have to conserve those timeouts as resources for end-of-game scenarios. Here he goes to tight open, and he's going this combo. This this is one of his go-to plays, and let's just kind of keep – again, fourth down is such a big down, but you have a, a an out route. Here we have a little return route a post, and then a streak in a corner. Now, notice what Drini does. Drini sends four. And this is honestly really pretty good defense, but it's honestly just basic cover four. I don't know what this zone is. I actually don't have any clue what the zone is. I think, I don't know what he's doing. I mean, this is like, is this cover five? Five people deep? I, I don't know what he's doing in this situation. Sometimes, and Drini might be doing this, just to try to see what Dez is going to do in the situation and not give up a touchdown. Anyway, Dez ends up throwing this corner route to the left side, and he catches it. Drini tries to switch stick onto it, take it away, and is not able to. The aggressive catching in this game is really, really, really effective. And here we see, this is the first time we've really seen this combination this is out of corner strike, out of bunch strong offset. And this is the Madden 24 double corner concept. It was actually started in Madden 23. Uh, but basically, you know, this is the idea here. Now, what Dez is doing is he's motioning out an additional seam streak threat in this left side slot. These seam streaks are important for two reasons. The first is because they you have to respect them. They're one of the easiest throws to make in the game. But the second reason why these seam streaks are so important is because it limits what you can do with your switch stick. Because if you switch stick onto a deep blue that has a streak over the top of it, the streak obviously will be a touchdown. 
So kind of a cat and mouse game here. Dez does give that pressure, able to scramble up, almost a fumble. And you see, I mean, Drini's facial expressions, he's like, man, I feel like I'm almost, you know, in a position to stop him two or three times so far on this drive and, you know, really haven't been able to, uh, haven't been able to get off the field. So, all right. So here you see now he's in that backed off corner. This time he only brings one guy and does able to dot him up. And I'll tell you what's really interesting as I watch Dez play. One of the things, and this is one of the principles that I teach defensively in all of my ebooks, and really just more of a philosophy or style of defense that I really believe in, and that is take the little, take the layups away. There should the layup make them throw in the middle of the field. I feel like that's the hardest. Like we, sh I, I really am a big believer in playing a lot of hard flats. Um, situationally, you might you know play a cloud flat, but Definitely a big believer, and I got to take away the flat, and I've got to take away like the bigger play, and I'm going to force you to throw corner routes, because those are routes you can switch stick on. Those are routes that take time to get open, and those are routes that you know if you have a good blitz, it's hard to throw against that. So you'll see here, Dez is gonna, Dez will never miss a flat. He'll he'll always throw these flats. Like boom, there's that flat. I actually, of course, I say that he actually missed a flat there. Uh, that was the old school Durham setup just a flat instead of a wheel and it is another thing that's really interesting to me but i mean everybody would agree that these are the best players in the world especially at this moment in time and they will miss reads they will make mistakes right so we all you know it's kind of one of those things where you have to realize and look at this throw and he catches it too <laughs> and he just uh you see Dez's face i mean he just knows like it, 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 and one of the things that Dez is doing, one of the big mechanics that I think came out of the, out of this event is the high point passing. Uh, high point passing is something they said they addressed in the patch and is obviously something that is very, very effective. Dez is going to audible around here. This time he's going to go to tight way off. Little cheap motion bubble screen. Not a bad play, but at all. Love that cheap motion, get an extra blocker in the run game. Drini able to play good run defense. One of the things you always want to learn from these guys is how are you scoring inside the five and how are you getting stops inside the five? Drini is going to stay in that pinch dollar look. This is kind of the skimbo defense, if you will. He's been running this pretty much all year. And Drini is going to do shaded down man. Kind of an interesting decision. And actually glued everything. That's pretty good coverage from Drini. And going to force a third down and goal. Third down and goals are huge. Those are pretty much, especially where Dez is at, it's kind of an obvious passing situation. And the hardest place in the on the field to pass is inside the 10, in, inside the 5. Basically, the 10 and in, this is the hardest, hardest place to pass. So you have the least amount of space. Notice what Dez is going to do here. And this is something that I honestly feel like I do kind of feel like this should have been addressed. Like, this is a – let's just stop it here. This is the combo, which is – I don't know why, actually, he likes this combo. Like, I guess Cooper – like, I don't know why – I feel like this should be able to be defended with a cloud here, a vert hook here. I, I, I don't know. But basically, this is an illegal formation. There's nobody on the line of scrimmage over here. This is a completely illegal formation. If the running back was over here, this would be fine. It would be a legal formation, but it's a completely illegal formation. And this has been a glitch in the game since the game dropped. Basically, we have a seam streak that we can look at off rip. If that's not open, we're really probably looking over here. And then our late read is going to be here. And then last but not least, we can play make of the curl or scramble. So that's kind of probably what he's looking for here. And we'll just see kind of what coverage Drini actually goes to. But this is a completely illegal formation. So as you see here, he sends this guy. To me, this is dumb. And the reason why is because you have four receiving threads over here, right? So why would you blitz this guy? I guess to prevent a rollout maybe, but I just don't understand the send the guy when there's four receiving threads over here. I don't, I don't quite get that. Um, and, and again, you see here, here's the cloud. So watch this tight end corner is going to be taken away, right? But look where he goes users here so so far this looks pretty much bagged up 
and then the scramble. And then he gets down into the two. And now we have an early fourth and goal. And Drini, I mean, you see right there, like, fairly good defense against what he's wanting to do. Des setting up kind of a secondary red zone formation. And is going to come out here in fourth and goal. And we'll see what he ends up deciding to do. He is going to... Okay, so is he going to go for this? Five wide. And this is um, this is another thing that's really popular this year. This wheel, if this is like a cloud flat, the cloud flat will run inside for some odd reason, and the wheel will be open. Now, if it's a hard flat, it's it's pretty much bad. I mean, you could throw it late. Let's just see what Drini does defensively. I think he – oh, he is going to snap it. Okay. So you see here, this is that shaded down man. You could throw this. You could throw this wheel like right when he cuts up field. But this shade down man is going to do pretty good against everything. As you see, uh, the scramble, though, is wide open. He actually throws the tight end. I think Drini switch sticked onto the tight end to try to take it away. And just a lot of meshing concepts underneath. And ends up getting, getting what he wants. And uh, a, a touchdown on a drive really where Dez... Didn't look great. Wasn't a lot of a um, lot of uh, aggressive catching, high points. You know, running illegal formations. Just kind of a kind of interesting. All right, so Dez is going to be in double mug. So this is kind of interesting too. So Drini is in the Eagles playbook, and this playbook has trips tight and flex, which is one of the best formations in the game with some auto motions. But it also has this normal wild close now. This normal off close is going to feature a lot of cheat motioning of the tight end. What's interesting about this, or it could also feature cheat motion of, you know, different players. With this tight end cheat motions over here, it's basically U-trips, okay? If you think about it, because if the tight end, let's just say he's not here, and let's say the tight end is here, this is essentially U-trips. But what makes this formation really good, it has this backward zig, it has these, these short, sharp, posts that beat man coverage well now uh des is in double mug obviously double mug has been patched at this point and this is the new way of running it so what you're going to see drini do or uh, des do is he's not going to be sending these two guys as much he's mainly going to be sending these outside guys now because these three want to pinch here and this opens up the edge pressure of the defense We'll kind of see how this goes um, for Dez. Draining looks like half sliding to the right. Some cheat motions here. Most Draining just, I have to tell you, some of the combos are interesting. And a little drag, a little solo backside drag there. Nice read. But this normal wild close has a lot of good cheap motions, kind of a lot of unique plays. Really, it's the main reason why I would think you'd run this is for the sharp cutting posts you have. Some good RPOs here. Drini is using Joe Burrow um, as well, which Dez and Fancy used Levis, and I believe Drini and Big Tay used Burrow. So you see you got that seam streak. Now look at the sharp post. The sharp post basically has to be used every time. So the and it, it, you switch to switch stick to it whatever but you have to guard you have to guard that short post every single time and so because of that you can then basically just have a lot of stuff underneath of it as well. So he's gonna go to wide sail in this tight end corner. I would stem this down. He's gonna go double streaks here on the left side, kind of take advantage of the seam and then that backside check down. I like that concept. Cheap tight end angle. You know, see, I mean, just different cheap plays for the tight end in this. And there's other formations too. You can get into Nat. You can get into Bunch X Nasty in here. You can get into Trips Tight and Flex. I think there's a decent tight. You have, um, there you see, you see, how, there's the audible trips. Now, look at the play. This is one of the most popular setups in the game. And this guy can either be blocked or put on a flat. Why is this play good? This route beats man. This route beats man. This route beats man. If it's cover zero, this route can beat man. What's double mug? It's normally a man-to-man -man base defense. Now, 
here Dez goes zone, just a basic roll cover three, able to kind of find that soft spot in the zone to that backwards zig, and he is able to uh, get a first down. So now we're in a second and four situation. Here's that audible to trips again. Now we have that cheap motion. And Dez, I do believe, is... Oh, there he sends the corner on the outside. That's kind of an interesting deal. I think Dez is in... I think he's in zone, like as a basic. He's not man aligned. He's showing blitz. And the show blitz gets these guys down. Here we have a nice, this is a great play. A little couple short corners and tight ends open. We don't throw it. We'd rather throw a covered drag wrap. That almost was a pick. Kind of a bad read by Adrini there. The corner route was wide open. And then you have that, that again, that sharp post on the left side, which we don't see Drini throw a lot throughout these um, throughout these games. All right, so here a little pause, delay. Don't know what's going on here. Let's, let's get back to it. All right, so here we go, fourth and four. All right, what are you going to run for fourth down? So why this flat here? Because if this is a soft spot, it'll bite down. This streak will pull this half inside, and this is a touchdown over the top. One of Dez's favorite defenses to play is cover two in this situation because we're basically banking on sheds. I don't know why Dez gets out of double mug here, but notice, see how the deep half, see how it's kind of playing the tight end. This is open for a free form high point over here. And Drini gets on the board. So seven to seven. And Dez is going to be getting ball. Four minutes and 19 seconds left in the first half. So first drive, you kind of basically see, typically in the first drive, you're going to see kind of their standard plays, their standard stuff. And as this, and, and then after the first drive, it's really where the, the Madden begins because now we're going to start to see how you adjust, right? Uh, first drive is kind of a fill-out drive. You kind of learn the tendencies. You should pretty much always score on your first drive. And now you're going to start to see... You're going to start to see uh, tendencies just in how they call their plays and what plays they go to and why they go to those plays in certain situations. So third and one here. I think Dez is going to go to that cheat inside zone. A bunch nasty. Looks very similar to the other cheat plays. You see, you get that cheap motion, and then you get an inside zone off of that. So Madden did a really good job with these cheap motion plays of putting a couple of them in that did different things. Not just having one cheap motion, but now you have, you know, a couple different things. He really likes this corner divide play with a streak and a corner. Not sure what the – what I mean, yeah, and that's where I just think zones are so bad in this game that these are pretty – they're, they're just pretty odd combos that you don't normally see in a Madden game. And I feel like it's primarily because you don't have to, you don't really have to have great combos of this game. Just say another thing that's really interesting to me is we're not going to, like, if you really watch here, there's not a ton of switch sticking. In the first couple of tournaments, we saw, you know, a lot of corner routes, a lot of switch sticking to corner routes, switch sticking to crossers. The only player that I feel like you really still see like switch stick at a like switch stick two to three times on a play is fancy. Seriously. You see here, like Drini, like right there, like, why are you not switch sticking to that right side? Like, and Des able to throw that, and that's one of those. This was, uh, and this is the corn combo, double corner. Now look what Dez is doing a lot. This is, he does this a lot. I guess this is hard to switch stick to maybe is why. I don't know. But this is a quarter or half. This is a soft squat or cloud, one of the two. And there's just this sea of space where he throws into this. And he throws into it quite a bit. 
and he just loves that 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 type of bench style, you know, bench style combo against cover two. And that's on the double corner, but still basically the same concept. It's just that short corner didn't get out there as fast. So anyway, just kind of interesting. Um, able to get able to get seven, and now we're gonna see back to Drini offensively again. There you see, and this is one of his main plays. So we have a flat, we have a short post, a clear out streak, and then a drag underneath and a flat. So essentially, this short post is gonna run all the way over here as well. Normally, you're gonna throw that short post here. So if you let's say quarter and let's say Des switch sticks to this, then the the streak's over the top of it for a touchdown. So you know that's obviously the reasoning. You see here's a flat. There's the drag. Des no switch stick, but gets pressure. And did he send four? This is a four man. Look at the pressure here. Kind of important. Look where he's used Riz. So he's hovering in the A gap. Okay. Look at this. His guy pinches in. This happens a lot now. This guy's in for pressure. This is like free defense. Look at this. That's instant pressure. What can you throw? There's nothing there. You can throw maybe that. Maybe. He's actually trying to throw it. Yeah. I mean, that's that's really good pressure. Post patch out of double mug. And I see it a lot. I see it a lot in double mug right now. If you literally just do something like that, you can get really good pressure post patch. So we have goes to trips, motion post, going to go slant post with a speed out, decent combo. Got the speed out and throw it. And there's a switch stick. So Dez is anticipating this throw. Now, I don't know why he switched six here. Maybe to go guard this and then to maybe fake go guard this. I don't know. But essentially, Dez really quickly reads. Look at look at when he switched six. six. He still hasn't completely switched six, but he's going to switch six this and just bite down on the route. Completely bites down on the route right as it's thrown, undercuts it, and gets a stop. The way Dez got a stop, even though he's getting good pressure, even though he's playing good defense, the way Dez ultimately gets a stop is a great switch stick situationally and just lurking him on a switch stick. Great play by Dez, 21-7 lead. And now Drini's kind of in one of those spots. He's not in a terrible spot because he could take all this clock and he could, um, you know, basically he could take all this clock and then he could be in a position where I believe Drini gets ball at a half. So if he scores seven here, he's not, you know, he's not in a bad spot. Almost gets a pick right there. But again, just watch this double mug. You know, we'll say the pressure is still there. Dez is doing a lot of using. He's not really using her safety here. He's going to use her the slot. And I think the reasoning probably is so that those safeties can help defend against the seams. You would think. And look at the holy screamage. This is a screamer. Let's take a look at this pressure. So this is kind of classic double mug. The more you try to block it, the worse it gets. So this is a slide to the right. Block running back. ID this guy. Here we get a guy coming right through the A-gap. We get another guy coming right through the A-gap. We get another guy. There's three guys on top of him. This is off of a protection. And this is essentially the idea that Again, the more you slide to try to pick up Mug, I think the better the blitz gets. And that's going to take us to the two-minute warning. Going to see what Drini does here. A little double Mug. I think this is a... I always think this is RPO. That's not an RPO. Motion at the running back. That's kind of a nice motion. We got see how, look at all the streaks on the field and here we go. This is this is where you know look this is a five, and and Dez literally just sends six, so he gets a free runner, and he's able to able to get really nice pressure, seam streak, knock out, and now we're in a fourth down situation. All right, here we go, big fourth down for Drini. We'll kind of see what what the call is. 
Obviously, it's going to be Drini's best play, best big moment in the game. A lot can go wrong for Drini if he does not get this. And so we see here in this situation, he's going to go to a five. Okay, so five wide here from Drini. Another thing that I was going to say is that Dez, this is his scanner thing. So you got to be expecting some type of cover two here. Typically, what Dez is going to do is actually a cover three where we're going to drop out like this. And then these guys are probably going to be just basically protecting the sticks. And then we'll have, you know, one of these. And essentially, it's just a shed defense, right? He's basically just betting he can get a shed in before you can get something, you know, that's over that. It's going to be tough throwing windows. Basically, everything is going to be open underneath. All right, so here we go from Dream. Let's see what the combo is. I don't know if we'll be able to see it here. Yeah, we are able to see it. Okay. Back this up. I should take a look at the route combo he is drawing up here. Okay, so what he does is he's stemming this corner route super deep. And then, okay, so basically, I don't know what this is. This has got to be a super deep corner route. So primarily here, essentially, Drini is probably betting that this is going to cause Dez to have to use her over in here, right? And then the main read is really going to be this post. I don't know what the drag's for. I mean, maybe if you get, like, a run after catch type deal. So we'll just kind of see this flat as well. Just trying to pull zones out away. Going to get a double team on this tackle potential rollout here. And you see there, there's, again, this is exactly what I said. So you have cover three, right? And then the user. User is usering the post. So this is the throw you have to make, or this dream rolling out of the pocket. And he's going to throw that and almost actually get the completion. I feel like pretty much that was seam streak or bust. Seam streak, short post, or bust. The other two underneath route com routes, I don't know what the purpose of those were. And that's a big situation because, again, 21 to 7, Des plays this right. He can go in a half 28 to, 28 to 7. Or even 28 to 10, you know, pretty much here for Dez, we're just trying to, you know, get in. I will say, because of the situation that we're in here, he can just take Drini. Drini has one time out left, a buck 46 left in the half. Honestly, it could just be one of those things where we just take our three um, and 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 just make sure. Because this what what that happens is if he takes three here, he's going to go up by th uh, three possessions. But here we go, another glitch, going back to that glitch play uh, with an illegal formation, and he's just going to throw a touchdown. And and now we're in a weird, now Drini's in a tough spot. Now, again, it's pretty much the same situation. If Drini goes down and gets three, now you're a three-possession lead either way. So, and Drini hasn't shown really that this offense is good enough to beat a good defensive player like Dez. So, I mean, Dez has a couple stops. And I think Dez is just saying, all right, I'm just going to try to score and try to see if he'll give me another stop. Again, back in this dub, double mug, just notice the pressure that Dez is able to send out of this. I think it's pretty significant. Getting a lot of different types of pass protection from Drini, just trying to figure out how to pick this up. This is the new double mug. Well, you're really focusing on these edge rushers is really the primary thing here. Here we get a little cover three cloud type stuff that I was talking about. And Drini's going to throw a little flat to the back. And second brings up a second and seven situation. Again, a minute, 30, 30 seconds, plenty of time in this game to get down and score before the end of half. Even to get seven here, you can put a drive together. A lot of time. Some interesting routes. Let's see if he, again, kind of mainly just watching this blitz. Here you see there's a sin. Was that a sin? I think it was a sin five and didn't get anybody free there. So that was... Good pass pro from Drini. He couldn't take advantage of it. Ends up getting a get a um, a shed and a a knock a throw out a sack. Third and seven. Looks like Dez is kind of moving these D line. I don't know if he's pinching them or what he's doing. He's doing something to them. Might even just be user clicking onto them. That combo has been Drini's bread and butter. There you see, there's that four man. That's what I'm talking about. And we've seen this a couple of times in this game. You're going to see here, Drini sends five out. Now, Dez is only sending four. It looks like he's containing out of this. So we have a, a send four with a contain. And watch this contain just loop around the tackle and get to the quarterback for a sack. And we've seen this picture before in the first half. And Drini can't do anything about it. And that's going to bring up a fourth and seven situation. 
really good defense from Dez, kind of showing the double mug pressure and what you can do from it post-patch. Even though the four-man disengage of the A-gap has been patched, that has now opened up the four-man edge pressure. And then we have another situation, fourth and seven. Um, the, the first time that Dez ran this defense, he got a touchdown scored on him. The second time we saw him run this defense in this game, he darn near gave up a fourth and 18. And now on a fourth and seven, let's see if he can get off the field. So you see Drini pretty much knows the defense Dez is going to be in because this is his quote unquote big down defense. I don't know why he, I don't know why he wants to do this so much. I, I just don't quite understand it because you're going to see here fourth and seven. Drini's going to, now you see there's that streak. Now we don't have that underneath drag anymore. Got that R1 drag, look at that post, wide open. And again, that's what I'm saying. Like, I just don't know why you go to that defense there. I feel like Double Mug is caging caging him. And then we go to this, and it's, it's like he knows what you're doing defensively. I'm just really surprised that he's continuing to go for it. Because, again, he's ran that defense, I think, three, maybe four times up to this point in the game. And every time, pretty much something, with the exception of that fourth and 18, where he actually could have caught the ball, he just got KO'd. You know, I mean, I feel like I feel like Drini is cooking that defense. I, I mean, he can't move against double mug. I mean, there's nothing. I mean, look at these look at these throwing lanes. Look at the pressure. I feel like Dez just could have been in the same basic coverage from double mug, and it would have forced Drini to have to respect the blitz. He doesn't have to respect a, a blitz from nickel over. And I just don't love that play call from Dez, and I just feel like it's one of those little things that is going to make a big difference. And this has been something that Dez has been doing for years. Always wants to be in that that play call on those quote unquote big downs. I'm just, it just kind of surprises me that he's having so much success defensively. As you see, he's just having so much success with double mug defensively. Why go to the, why go to nickel over? You know, I just, I, I wish, you know, wish, wish I could understand that one because I feel like every time he's done it, big plays have happened for junior big play potential. It's clear that it's not really that effective. So anyway, third and 10, and this is an, this is the Skimbo Dagger setup. There you see it again. And I mean, guys, this is something that we got to take note about. Look at this again. Four man pressure. Four man pressure. Just basic send four. Actually, that was a send three. That was a send three, and he's getting instant pressure at the quarterback. Look at all this coverage. There's triangles over both sides of the field with the user in the middle of the triangle. Not much you can do about that. Somehow he completes it. And you look at Dez saying, you know, my bad. I got I to gotta make better use of there. But, I mean, this is a very powerful defense post-patch. And th this is on the latest version of the game. This is double mug has, quote, unquote, been patched. And you're seeing double mug get send three completely free. So something to kind of take away. From this game is double mug might very well be the best defense of the game post patch. It was the best defense of the game pre patch. Here we go, throw right out a guy, almost a pick there. Going to that trips flex, going with some seams. I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen Drini run more of the of the trips flex with the wheel on the left. Main reason why is this auto motion gives double mug a ton of issues. This uh, this auto this one of the reasons why these auto motions became so meta. So here's pass protection, a little full slide to the right. ID here. We'll see how this picks up the double mug. We got a speed out here. I don't know if we're going to hike. I don't know what's going on. Is he not going to hike? 22. Kind of an interest. Was that fourth down? Third and long. I don't know. What what was that? I guess Dream just didn't like the play call. I don't know what was going on there. But pretty much same situation. Probably going to get the same play. Same, pretty much everything. Situation is basically going to be repeated. So you have motion post. I don't know what this is with the tight end, a stemmed curl. Half sliding to the right now. Now here we get the full slide. And we've got the ID here on this left-hand side. We get that auto motion. We got four streaks. No, no pressure there. Good pass pro. And he catches that at the three. But now Drini has no timeouts. So let's see if he gets a spike off. You're probably coming out in a spike. He does get a spike off. One second. Situationally here, probably got to go for it. Probably got to go for it. Because if you don't, if you get three, you're still down three possessions. Whereas if you get a touchdown here, then you basically only need one stop to get back in the game. Because Drini gets ball out of half. So he could very quickly turn this into a 21-28 game. 
with Dez uh, getting the ball and Drini being, giving himself plenty of time uh, to be able to get a, a stop in a, in a key situation. So here we go. This is a huge play for Drini. He's got to get a touchdown. Ends up taking, I don't want Drini to take a bajillion delay of games. I don't know if he wanted more space or indecisive or what on that in that situation. All right, so here we go. This is probably the biggest play of the game up to this point. See what Drini dials up. Ball on the eight-yard line. This is the last play of the second quarter, last play of the half. Dez going to dollar. So we've seen Dez mainly be in double mug. In this situation, he goes to dollar. Probably just going to have a ton of zones all over the place. The combo for Drini, flat, streak, and he just, oh, man. That's a good read from Drini. I feel like that's not great coverage from Dez. Let's take a look at his coverage and just see kind of what happens here. It almost looks like, let's back it up one more tick. Let's watch these outside corners and see what they do. Okay, so we get hard flat, cloud flat, hard flat, cloud flat. I think pressure here. So basically clouds on the outside. I think, I would assume this is a hook curl, hook curl. There's no, look at this space, like, what, I guess I oh I think what happened is he got clicked onto the DT. He got clicked onto the DT, and when you're clicked on to the DT, to switch stick you have to hit circle and point in the direction. So it's not an easy switch stick to get to here, which is probably what he's trying to do. And as you see, I mean Drini just oh my goodness, that's just tough. That's something you can't let happen if you're Dez, but kind of unfortunate. And Drini's able to stay in the game with that touchdown. All right, so second half action. For Drini Dez, Drini does have the ball first. Dez is going to be in that double mug. And we've got three streaks on the field for Drini with a, under, with a drag. Nice throw. I like that read on that short side. So the cool part about that cheat wheel is it kind of wheels and then it almost like fades to the sideline. And the nice part about that is if you have that to the short side of the field, the way zones really suck to the inside of the field this year, if you have a clear out streak from that tight end, especially in that trip side and flex really puts them in a good position, then you're able to really easily uh, just be able to clear out zones and you can just throw that quick if they're not switch sticking to it. Little seam streak, going to be able to catch that. That's a nice catch in traffic. And Drini's coming out cooking here in the second half. This is exactly what you need if you're Drini. To get back in this game, you need to score quick because if you, you're going to need a stop. No matter what, you need at least one stop, maybe two stops to get back in this game. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to get yourself the most amount of time to be able to get a stop that you can possibly get here. So nice step up, throws a high point right at Dez's user, but the high ball is too powerful. And Drini, I think within three, four plays, makes this a one-possession game. That's about it. That's exactly what you need to do if you're Drini, and that's exactly what you didn't need to happen if you're Dez. You give up the seven at the end of the half. You give up seven right quick out of this, and all of a sudden the game completely flipped. In a game that Dez was pretty much dominating, right, Drini somehow finds his way back in the game. This is what makes Drini so good. This is what Drini does all the time. This is why he's had so much success in the MCS is because he's able to get back into games where he really shouldn't be in the game. Now, there we go, DB Fire 2 again. Just notice walking off. Now, you're going to see Drini's best step defensively. He's got to get the stop. He's probably realistically got maybe three chances at a stop. That's assuming that he's able to score fast and does doesn't take too much clock. You're going to see Drini's best stuff defensively and really him trying to really force to get a stop here. So you're seeing a lot of switch sticking, nice spacing, good route combo from Dez, able to hit that running back streak up into the seam area of the field and let's see we've got a bunch strong we're going to flip it notice he's walking these guys off now he's just going to go out and press and now he only brings down the weak side safety this whole right side seems exposed Dez going to stay in bunch strong probably going to audible here looks like he's going to audible over to y trips and run base real quick tip about this when you run the ball, especially if you are not in a formation that is quote-unquote an offset formation. So if you're in regular bunch, U trips, Y trips, wing trio, trips tight end, trips tight end flex. You want to be handing the ball off 
on that with you want the running back to be taking the ball from the hand uh, from the side of the quarterback's throwing hand. So Will Levis is a right-handed quarterback. You want to make sure that that running back is to the right when you run this run. You're going to get a faster handoff animation than if this was flipped. Same thing if you want to run a play action play. So just kind of a little thing. Would always want to point that out in case you didn't know about that. That's something very little, but it can make a big difference because when you get those faster handoff animations, you it, it really helps for gap shoots. It really helps for defensive line penetration. As you saw right there, he's able to cut up, get three yards. If that's a slow handoff, he might get hit in the backfield and lose three yards. So just a little thing, but uh, something you kind of need to be aware of. All right, so here we go. Bunch strong, nasty, that play action play that Dez loves to call. And this is that corner route play. This is that flat corner street, uh, corner flat. So looking to hit those pockets. There's R1, and there it was. So you notice another little thing about that. When Drini's trying to switch stick onto the half to go play, the when Drini's trying to switch stick onto the half to go play the corner route, Des ends up throwing the seam streak, and it kind of opens that route up. So again, you know, this game's all about seam streaks. Here's a corner divide play. Loves this setup. It's one of his main plays that he loves to run. And not sure. I don't know if that, I wonder if that return route pulls a soft squat here. Get that corner route on the right side. Throws return route right at Dreaming's user. Dreaming's a step behind, not able to get there. That's going to bring up a second and 10. Or actually, he was able to get there. I think he knocked it out. All right, so second and 10. Situation, we're going to tight open. Tight open's one of those formations this year. Almost every playbook has it. It's a great little mini scheme to add into your arsenal. We have a little tutorial on that in uh, on our channel. So if you haven't checked that out yet, Des loves to motion out that running back, put him on a 10-yard speed out, really spaces the field well. Another thing that you're seeing this year that you really haven't seen a lot is these more spread out formations. And really, like, five wide style offenses are really good this year, primarily probably due to switch stick. Here we see another illegal formation call. From Dez, this is completely illegal. They should have banned this motion in the tournament. Dez has scored two touchdowns off of it in this game. Here he's going to go to an RPO and try to run a bubble screen. There he hits J. Chase for about five yards. All right, so second and five for Dez. This situation here, see what he ends up going to. I mean, you don't have to score seven. Like, scoring three is okay. Uh, this is another red zone play that he likes. I want to see this at a tight way off. Get a little cheat motion from the tight end. I don't know what he's doing with that right side player. Um, not sure. Just a little hitch over there. But really likes that little combo of flat, hitch, corner. Nice little red zone play from Dez. And now we're going to get that I form Y off close formation. And Dez loves to run the ball out of this one. We'll see if he goes to a stretch. I close. Go to goal line here. Looks like a power O potential. Love power O. And I think it was actually halfback steam. And uh, Dez able to get a big seven in that situation there. All right, so Judy could get the ball back. He basically, you know, again, clock matters, right? So... He's got to go down. He's got to score, but he's got to give himself enough time to be able to get a stop. He's going to have to get a full-fledged stop here to be able to get back in this game. Dez knows that. So Dez should be calling a little bit more of a, I don't know, just keep everything in front of you type of defense, you would think here, uh, but still sending some pressure, still giving himself a chance at a stop. There you see, there it is, send six. That send six screams out of mug, especially post-patch, just because those defensive ends are now you know, 90 speed, pretty fast, able to just, you know, get that pressure. Notice Drini's doing a lot more five out, motion out, and he's blocking his tight end. That has kind of been his his counter, if you will, to the double mug defense as he's starting to block his tight end. Now, while it's a good thing that he's blocking his tight end to pick up the pressure, that does take away one of the seam streak threats of his offense and so it, it, it kind of just changes how Dez's coverage is going to work. If he's going to be blocking the side in a lot more now, it looks like he's going to go ahead and block a running back. Full slide right, ID left, able to pick up that double mug blitz. 
and Drini's starting to kind of figure this defense out. He's moving good now, and he is going to get down to the two-yard line, brings up a first and goal to goal situation for Drini. Again, one of the biggest things you want to learn from these events, you want to see how are they blocking blitzes, how are they playing in red zone, you know, what are they doing? Here for Dez, we're going to go to 6-1. What Dez likes to do to this, likes to blitz these guys with the primary run defense. Typically going to use her a weak side safety. Now, in this formation, even though strong side is over here, the main run is this fullback slam. So you got to kind of watch for this safety. So he's going to be user and looks like probably on the, on the right side safety here, maybe on the left. Get a little motion over. Now he's bringing them all the way down in here, and he's just going to take away that option. You're not going to be able to just, you know, I, I talk about it a lot, but like take away the layups, right? Don't let them have the easy runs. Make them throw down here. Make things, make them have to work a little bit um, because that's where you open them up for mistakes. So here he's going to use your same exact way over the center user. Nice. I don't know what he did on those corners. That might have been a hard flat. That might have been a blitz corner, actually. Um, Drini or Dez. Dez is totally selling out here for the run. Drini's now going to run right at Dez and is able to get another stop of the run. And now we get a fourth and goal situation. Again, this is great. This great kind of tutorial here from Dez. Just kind of showing when you commit to stopping the run and you force them to pass. Couple things happen. Number one, you force them into a potential mistake. Number two, the other thing that happens is more clock, right? He's lost a minute, minute and a half, which is super big here. Ends up able to score. Des just commits a gap shoot. It's kind of crazy that Drini ran a fourth time. Honestly, down here, it's also kind of crazy that Des, I think, just messed up the user a little bit, wasn't able to make that tackle, and Drini's able to score. So, your user, you know, th those are like things that I feel like people never lab that really can make a big difference in a comp Madden game because so much of it comes down to the red zone. So much of it comes down to getting stops in the red zone and scoring consistently in the red zone, which is kind of a, what you saw right there out of, out of Drini. All right, three minutes, four minutes-ish. Okay, so short corner here from Dez. This is a send, send to everybody from Drini there. Oh, and Drini changes defenses. I forgot about that. So he's changing defenses here. So notice what he does. He goes to 6-1. Um, so he's been in dollar the entire time. Goes to 6-1. Probably going to be doing a lot of send six. Again, this is trying. This is like last step. We've got to get a stop. This is the drive we can get a stop. We've got to, and what we do is, okay, we're going to go to 6 1. Well, what kills 6 1? This audible right here to trips makes it really hard on 6 1. And just basic plays, a basic bubble screen RPO. There you see there's a stemmed out route all the way up. You can throw this like a streak, basically. He actually stems it all the way down and throws it. Uh, it's another little tip with the out routes. Normally on an RPO play, you have that out route. And you can custom stem that route up or down. If you want to stem it all the way up, it turns it into like a streak. If you want to stem it all the way down, it turns into like a quick flat that you have to be able to take advantage of that. So here you see Dez going back to the bunch tight end formation and should be audibly out of that. Right into the trip side in again. This is what gives this this is what gives six one a lot of issues. Is this audible to trips? You notice Drini's bringing the safety over. He's bringing everybody over here. R one should be wide open. Great tackle there from the, the corner. And now we have a third down and four situation. This is probably the biggest situation of the game. Drini has three timeouts. You really don't want to have to start using these timeouts, but you might have to. And again, we're also in this situation where if Des gets a field goal. That's really all he needs to kind of secure the victory to a degree. Um, so this is a huge third down and four situation. Dez is going to go to that motion out. And now we have a, a little different combo. Haven't seen this yet from Dez. He's got that speed out there quick. He's got that backside drag. You got to anticipate it's hard for these guys to get out here on this out route. So he's looking streak to out and then this backside high low. Does actually play that and actually gets a sack. That's a huge sack for Drini. Two reasons why that's a huge sack. 
The first reason why that's a huge sack is obviously it brings up a fourth down situation in the middle of the field. But the second reason why that's a, uh, that was a huge, huge sack for Drini is because now Des cannot, he's not even close to field goal range. So he can't really kick a field goal. He kind of has to go for this. And then if he doesn't get this, Drini's in a potential position uh, to be able to go go down and win the game. Now, this is the biggest play of the game by far. Drini hasn't had to use any timeouts, but look what he does. And this is really, really important. So 6-1 baseline show blitz. Now, what Drini's doing is he's bringing the safety over here. And Drini might flat out use her, the safety, for all we know. But the big issue with this is what is the best play from this? What is the best play from this formation? The best play from this formation is the auto motion streak with a streak or a post with a drag, right? This is what he's been doing all game. So what does Drini do? This is one of the most odd decisions I've ever seen. He grabs the corner, the only person over here that can defend this route, and he brings him right here. Now, we're all thinking maybe he's baiting Dez, right? Maybe he's going to man him up onto him on this cheat motion. That would be an idea, but let's see what he does. So he brings him all the way over. He's clearly using the middle linebacker. And look at what does. This, this, is, this is a free combo. Look at this. It's a streak. It's that cheat motion. It's a tight end slant and a backside post. Very similar to what you can do out of Lions. Now, I want you to watch the coverage. This is the most important thing. I don't know what he's on. This is maybe we're trying to switch stick and lurk this. I, I just... It's a send three. I don't. I just don't have any clue what we're covering. He does cross man this, but this is such a. I mean, you can't make that play. This is the freest, freest fourth and nine I've ever seen, and he's able to get this. I mean, it just was super odd, and 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 Des ends up going ahead, and he's like, I'm gonna go ahead and score because I know that Dre's gonna have to take some time. And then I'm going to be able to get back to the, you know, basically the game's going to come down to an onside kick. So I, I just thought th this was just one of the biggest plays of the game. And, and this is just one of the biggest mistakes I've seen. Like, I, you got to think he's trying to switch stick to this. So he starts here. Yeah, I mean, he's he's probably just trying to bait. I, I don't, I, man, he's switch sticking. Maybe he wants to switch stick here and bite down because he has this guy crossed. Maybe. I just I just would love to know why he did that. I, I just I, I don't know what this this doesn't do any I just don't know what that got him and I just feel like that was a free free I mean he's on the linebacker, then he's on the eh, it's just too quick, man, and and Des able to get seven. I just feel like that was a huge, huge mistake on Dreamy's part and I do think that that's ultimately what's probably gonna cost him the game. Is that decision? Dez gonna send six. Good heat. Yeah, I just, ah, I just wish he wouldn't have done that. I feel like that really made it an easy, easy. It's just a very easy fourth down for Dez. And again, I talk about that a lot. Like, make them work. Take away the layups. Make them have to. Make them have to do something to beat you. Um, and then we got Brown. Dreams kind of being smart, running out of bounds. Third and eight. So pretty much it looks like that full slide left block running back with an ID is probably the best pass pro for six four double mug. Now he's gonna now he's gonna send five out. See how he's sliding. He kind of goes back to goes back to empty protection. There's that four man coming in clean, and this is what double mug has been good about. Every good defense in Madden is gonna have some type of blitz that makes you block your running back, and then once you start to block your running back and start to have to set up protection, obviously that might be able to counter, that, that's typically able to counter most blitzes, at least most blitzes we've seen in recent memory. However, that is going to take you more time pre-snap to do that. You're going to have, you're going to have, I mean, there's just, it, it puts a lot more pressure on you offensively when you have to start to do stuff like that. Got that cheap motion with that wheel. There you see there's that soft spot, nice switch stick. He throws that speed out. That was the same speed out that he threw the pick on. And there he's able to complete it. There's just a lot in this game, man. This was a great game. And, and Drini 
Dream battled, and then he just kind of messed up on that that critical fourth down. I mean, that was a critical play. Great catch from Dreaming. That's, that's, that's the power of those sharp posts coming all the way back across the field. Great, great read. One trips flex. I don't love, I thought we were kind of picking our plays too slow. Like, I mean, look at the clock. I mean, I guess you got to deal with runoff either way, but I felt like, I don't know. I just felt like that's a little slow. One trips. There's a whip route. Nice read. AJ Brown gets down to the 18 yard line. And Drini's very smart. I think until that point he was saving his timeouts again. I don't know what the, this indecision. I mean, these are tough situations, a lot of pressure, hard to make these decisions quick. Uh, but the time is of the essence there. And we have a shed to throw out a sack. That's going to bring up about 37 seconds. Drini is kind of getting in that position where, you know, I mean, you're gonna to have to have an onside kick now. You can't give you can't really give the ball back to Dez. And Dez is now shift to dollar. It's kind of interesting, but Dez is pretty pretty much generally switched to dollar at about that 20 yard line, trying to kind of cut off those seam streaks, take away throwing lanes, play a little more zone in the red zone. Play a little bit more um play a little bit more like double safety zone type pressure with edge blitz and, and that kind of stuff. Third and two, you know, if you're Drini, you, you're kind of in a position where you have to pass too. So, and obviously passing the red zone is never ideal. He's going to go back to motion post. This was the play that he scored on. Actually going to go to RPO and able to get it. Now right here, I mean, I feel like, yep, that's a good timeout. That's a, that's, I mean, you're kind of at that point where you just run out of time. You, you've got to, you've got to throw it in the end zone. And here we get a tight end, and that's just unfortunate for him. He's not able to get in there. If he's able to get in there, that's, uh, you know, and then you got an onside chance. But now you got 24 seconds, second and goal. No timeouts left in the game. You know, it's just uh, it's a tough situation. Just a tough situation. Going to go to kind of a standard trips combo. Great D from Dez. And that's going to do it. Dez takes down Drini to advance to the final against Fancy. And I feel like we learned a lot in this game. Double mug, good pressure, some decent pass pro for it. Why Drini chose the Eagles playbook with those short post routes. And then also the importance of run defense inside the five-yard line. So thanks for watching the game, guys. If you're looking to take your Madden game to the next level, make sure that you join our school community. That's where we have access to all of our offensive and defensive ebooks, as well as all of the updates to those ebooks. So make sure you check that out. That link is in the description below.